The final item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion No. 9777 in the name of John Wilson on Scottish Wildlife Trust celebrates its 50th anniversary. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now, please. I call on John Wilson to open the debate around seven minutes, please, <coughs> Mr Wilson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I would like to thank the members across the political parties who signed my motion and particularly those who are uh, staying on tonight to speak in this debate. I should declare an interest, uh, having been a member of the Scottish Wildlife Trust for almost 20 years, uh, and it's one of these things that uh, I will go on to further explain part of the reason why I joined the, the Scottish Wildlife Trust. But this is an important debate in a number of ways, since it emphasises the contribution and celebrates the 50th anniversary of the Scottish Wildlife Trust, especially acknowledging the important role it has played in sustaining the vital ecology of Scotland's ecosystem. Its scale and scope speak for itself. When we think that the Trust manages a network of 120 wildlife reserves across Scotland, with 12 located in the cent in central Scotland area that I represent, it now has in excess of 35,000 members, of which I am a member. Its achievements have been vast in number and since April 2012, the Trust has raised over 4.2 million to protect Scotland's precious wildlife and wild places. It has also successfully hosted the International Conference on National Ecological Networks and played a significant role in projects such as Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels Project and the Scottish Beaver Trials. Scottish Wildlife Trust displays a great deal of energy in making a meaningful contribution in terms of supporting and promoting Scotland's natural heritage. Equally, it is critical that people realise that although the Trust does put a lot of effort into aspects of conservation, then it is not purely involved in conserving the past. Living landscapes is an area that the Trust quite rightly takes satisfaction from and is of some interest to me. In terms of planning, for example, I am aware that the Trust has now established planning volunteers in Glasgow and South Lanarkshire, thereby extending their coverage to 28 of the 32 local authorities in Scotland and has played a significant role in 20 major planning applications. I also know from my role in the Local Government and Regeneration Committee that the Trust has provided useful contributions to the development of the National Planning Framework 3 and continues to campaign to the Scottish Parliament on a wide range of issues affecting Scotland's ecological environment and wildlife. The development and protection of Scotland's natural environment is down to the part played by organisations such as the SWT and highlights the role of charitable organisations in these developments at both local and national level. In many ways, I come to today's debate from the background, as I stated earlier, of being a member of the Scottish Wildlife Trust I have witnessed firsthand the work of this organisation does within central Scotland. As I said earlier, I've been a member for almost 20 years and part of the reason for joining the Scottish Wildlife Trust was the, in relation to activities for my daughter at weekends. Uh, and two of the places we used to visit quite regularly, uh, one was, the, which is not in my regional area, which was the Falls of Clyde and I've got some stories to tell about some of the experiences there in terms of the peregrine falcons and those uh, pigeon fanciers who didn't like the peregrine falcons. But in particular, the visits to Jupiter Wildlife Centre in Grangemouth, a reclaimed area from industrial uh, chemical plant, uh, and my daughter's enjoyment at going pond dipping uh, and being handed a net to fish out whatever she could find in the wa water from pond skaters to various other creepy crawlies and beasties that were re-inhabiting the area. I've also made very informative visits to one of the sites within the SWT uh, Cumbernauld Living Landscape Programme not long ago and was impressed by the progress being made so far. As part of this programme, the SWT will be working alongside North Lanarkshire Council on an upcoming project celebrating the return of pine martens to the town. A very unique project that the SWT couldn't believe their ears when they heard that a pine martin was raiding one of the chicken coops 
of one of the local residents only to do the DNA testing to find out that it was actually definitely a pine marten. Uh, so we can actually see the wildlife re-inhabiting areas that SWT has uh, stewardship over and brings in other wildlife as well. Programmes such as this, which look to restore the Scottish landscape and preserve wildlife, are of real value to this and future generations. One of the real achievements of the Trust is getting out into the local communities and making people aware of their wildlife surroundings and how they can contribute. Members and volunteers throughout central Scotland have contributed a huge amount to conservation in the area, from tree planting to building boardwalks to improve access, and I'm also sure this has been replicated by members and volunteers throughout the whole of Scotland. By reaching out to schools and local groups, an interest is being sparked, particularly in young people, and communities are being given the tools to explore and cultivate their local areas. I note that since 2012, it has established eight new wildlife watch groups, with a total of 28 groups now engaged in young people throughout the country. Scotland has been blessed with some of the most beautiful landscapes in the world, and the role that the SWT has played in the past 50 years has been crucial in its protection and development. I look forward to the ongoing success of current projects including the Cumbernauld Living Landscape Programme, as well as the Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels project. This debate is important in highlighting the efforts of the staff, and some of, us, some of them are in the gallery today, members and volunteers who work alongside the Scottish Wildlife Trust does not go unnoticed. The success over the last 50 years is a testament to the time and energy all those involved put into making Scotland's wildlife and landscape the best it can be. And I wish the Scottish Wildlife Trust every success in the future in their campaigns and work with other agencies to ensure the work that's, hard work that's been done will continue to be done. Uh, and I look forward to government's response. Thank you. Many thanks. That brings us to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes, please. Graham Day to be followed by Claudia Beamish. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, as MSPs, we are approached, lobbied, if that isn't a tainted word, uh, by a wide variety of organisations seeking to influence our thinking. And of course, they adopt a wide variety of approaches. Some send us large, glossy brochures or extended emails, the middle of which, never mind the end, we'll never actually get to. There are others who secure face-to-face -face meetings, which are unlikely to be repeated. And then there's that group who get how, through advancing well-constructed, considered argument, they can make their case and how, by their action, they can command respect. The Scottish Wildlife Trust are very much in that category. And can I genuinely offer them my warmest congratulations on celebrating their 50th anniversary? Perhaps I should declare an interest. Unlike John Wilson, I am not a member of the SWT, but I am something of a fan of the organisation. Indeed, as they know, I don't just welcome their contributions to issues the Rural Affairs Committee may be considering. I have on many occasions found myself proactively seeking their opinions on topics, such as the trust I have in their knowledge and indeed their integrity. And as the turnout of MSPs planning to contribute to this debate tonight indicates, I'm clearly not alone in holding them in high, such high regard. It's actually quite funny looking back at the comment of the SWT's founder, Sir Charles Connell, uh, that when they set out, and I quote, some thought the trust might not obtain adequate support or find work to do which would justify their existence. O ye of little faith. From fairly humble beginnings, the trust membership has grown to 36,500 people. They manage 120 wildlife reserves, and have three visitor centres, including at Montrose Basin in Angus. And their purpose, to advance the conservation of Scotland's biodiversity for the benefit of, benefit of uh, present and future generations, is one which, at long last, wider society has started to waken up to the importance of. Only one of the trust reserves is located within my own constituency. Eighteen months ago, I had the great pleasure of visiting Seaton Cliffs in the company of their former CEO, Simon Millen, and seeing the wide range of seabirds nesting there. Less enjoyable, but just as important, was getting a close-up look at the impact of coastal erosion on one side and the negative impact of agricultural practices on the other. However, elsewhere in Angus, as the aforementioned Montrose Basin, 
and the front line of the Red Squirrel project on the South Esk estate. Last year, I was delighted to join the Environment Minister, Paul Wheelis, and my fellow Angus parliamentarian, Nigel Dawn, in visiting the estate and meeting with Lord South Esk and trust officials to see for ourselves how this hugely important project is being implemented. I was struck by the genuine partnership working that the project involves. Along with the trust you have SNH and the Forestry Commission Scotland involved, not to mention landowning interests all along the battlefront, as it were, seeking to halt the advance of grey squirrels and all the negative consequences their presence bring for the iconic red squirrel. Almost as pleasing was hearing of the work being done by the trust in educating primary school youngsters on the project and the need for it. And that visit also confirms something that I'd picked up through other dealings with the likes of Simon, Johnny Hughes and Maggie Keegan, that the real strength of the SWT is the people who work for it with their passion, commitment and at times pragmatism. Presiding officer, aware as I am of the number of colleagues who wish to contribute to this debate, I'll conclu conclude my contribution uh, there. Can I congratulate John Wilson in securing us this opportunity to pay tribute to the Scottish Wildlife Trust and say that contrary to the fears which were raised 50 years ago, the Trust has undoubtedly gone on to justify its existence and will, I'm sure, continue to do so for many decades to come. Thank you. Many thanks. And I now call Claudia Beamish to be followed by Rob Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I also want to thank John Wilson for bringing this motion to the Chamber today. The wide range of members who have signed his motion congratulating Scottish Wildlife Trust on celebrating its 50th birthday is testament to the geographical reach and the robust range of the Trust's work. In my region of South Scotland alone, the Trust boasts almost 6,000 members, 33 reserves, four watch groups and two conservation teams. I first encountered SWT over two decades ago as a community activist in Clydesdale for two reasons. Firstly, Ponfi Glen, a small piece of woodland which the local community council saw as inappropriately threatened by open cast mining. SWT ranger David Wilson advised on how our concerns fitted with planning policy, about which, frankly, I didn't have a clue, and, and enabling us to submit a pro, uh, an objection to Scottish um, to South Lanarkshire Council. This input in the planning process, as we've heard from John Wilson, has really gone in leaps and bounds, and there is support across much of Scotland for volunteers wanting to look at planning process. Secondly, SWT advice about the falls of Clyde, from the Falls of Clyde Ranger John Derbyshire helped us change what was a dreadful fly-tipping site at Loudon Pond on the Douglas Water into a community nature reserve of some significance. This SWT advice for conservation volunteers over the years is one of the reasons why the 1,553 local biodiversity sites across Scotland are in existence because of that support. One of the 33 uh, SWT reserves is, of course, Falls of Clyde, which stretches along both sides of the Clyde and, uh, and, and the dangerous gorge that is there. But the boardwalk that I opened um, this year has done much to help um, make that safer and I have had the delight of visiting the reserve with my family over many years when the children were small experiencing the thrill of the badger set seeing badgers snuffling out of their sets at dusk as the children became old enough to hold binoculars catching a glimpse of the peregrines nesting in the in the crevices across the Clyde so well protected round the clock by the by the peregrine watch by volunteers or simply absorbing the tranquil atmosphere along the walkway in the dappled sunlight and leaving the reserve refreshed. Since I had the honour of opening the new visitor centre earlier this year, there have been 20,000 visits and a further 50,000 to the reserve itself. And the importance of SWT species projects also cannot be overestimated. Last summer, I visited the Laidlaw family's uh, woodland site where they're helping to protect the Red Squirrel as part of Saving Scotland's Red Squirrel project. At the recent Scottish Parliament uh, reception, we welcomed Scottish, Scottish Wildlife Trust volunteers from all over Scotland. Scott Bland, aged 20, started at the Falls of Clyde, aged six, and the, and the um, East Lothian watch, uh, sorry, Wildlife Watch group, whose helpers and young detectives have worked um, tirelessly won a UK award. Without their contribution, the Trust could not operate. And it is right that we thank them again today as part of the 50th year celebrations. At a strategic level, Europe-wide and Scottish biodiversity targets have been missed. And I know the Minister will agree with me that this must not happen again in 2020. SWT does make a significant contribution to Scotland's biodiversity, and I was especially pleased to see the conservation progress made by SWT in all their sites, 
with 99% of the SWT triple SIs in favourable or unfavourable but recovering condition, which is much better than that achieved across the, across the triple SI range. I hope we can count on continued financial support for SWT and looking to the next 25 years, in their natural connections, a vision for rebuilding Scotland's wildlife, SWT calls for government to provide sufficient financial support for landscape scale action for wildlife and real recognition of the economic and social value of our environment, full recovery of, sorry, full delivery of the Scottish um, biodiversity strategy for an innovative and ambitious programme of actions and a strategic approach to tackling key threats to ecosystem health. I'm sure the Minister will agree that calls such as these are very much worthy of support. Good luck to SWT for the next 25, indeed the next 50 years. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call Rob Gibson to be followed by Nigel Doan. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to congratulate John Wilson on bringing this debate to the Chamber this evening. Uh, because 50 years of uh, the Scottish Wildlife Trust is something well worth celebrating and is celebrated by people who are volunteers within it, but by the wider public because of the fantastic work that they have done. I just want to mention uh, a couple of items in particular because I've been involved myself uh, in the direct influence of uh, their uh, involvement in uh, bringing to our attention the kinds of policy problems that exist in our own landscape. But in my constituency, there's three uh, of the uh, wet reserves, and I'm going to mention uh, in particular two of them, and the third one I'm hopefully going to visit this summer, although I pass through it quite often. Um, the two that I mentioned on the West Coast are Hand Island, which uh, belongs to Scourie Estate, but which is managed by the SWT. It was like a Robinson Crusoe island on the day that myself and my colleague George Farlow visited it with Maggie Keegan. And, uh, you know, you could uh, see the great school is only about 10 metres away uh, sitting on the uh, heather and all the other birds and so on in that beautiful summer day. But the importance of making sure that people could visit and could study in that area means that there's the expense of making sure that the facilities are up to scratch and that there was new modern toilets and indeed meeting places and so on so that the uh, resident in the summer could make sure that the visitors got the best experience. So the Wildlife Trust is interested in that biodiversity argument but also interested in making sure that people have a chance to experience that and to benefit from it. And I was very interested in that respect during the discussions about the National Planning Framework one of the points that was made in their briefing at that time was about uh, getting children who have severe attention deficit involved in nature. And uh, they gave us a quote from Richard uh, Louvre, the author of The Last Child in the Wood, which said, you know, time in nature is not leisure time. It's an essential investment in our children's health and also, by the way, in our own. And th th that possibility which has been made uh, the, the, the hallmark of the Scottish Wildlife Trust's activities is something that I think is very precious indeed. The biodiversity issues have been mentioned already by Claudia Beamish in particular, but I think one of the things that the Wildlife Trust has done, uh, as my previous example shows, is to think about the human aspects of that landscape and so on. And so the second area I want to talk about is the coal project, Coyach and uh, Ascent, which is a 50-year time horizon landscape scale project that allows us to think about the regeneration of the biodiversity, but also with the place that humans have in that, in the hope that we can have more people living in those areas and that they can live sustainably. And it's interesting when you look at the uh, uh, Achilty Bui end uh, at Coyach uh, in the land which is the largest area I think that the Wildlife Trust owns that they've been able to support the local community when they uh, sought to have some means to use wind power to be able to support local activities and the Scottish Wildlife Trust saw no difficulty in supporting that because they realised if there's going to be uh, means to look after 
the whole of the area and its natural beauty and its, its biodiversity, then the local population must be able to sustain itself. And I think that symbiotic relationship between nature and people is one of the highlights of the Scottish Wildlife Trust. I'd just like to finish by thanking Alan Bendick for uh, being the chair uh, in, uh, in a momentous period uh, for the officers that support him and wish Robin Harper, the incoming chair, all the best for many years to come, presiding officer. Thank you very much. I now call Nigel Dawn to be followed by Alex Johnston. Thank you very much, presiding officer. And it's conventional on these occasions to thank the sponsor of the motion, but I do genuinely want to thank John Wilson for bringing this to us. Uh, and also for moving seamlessly from his previous speech in the previous debate to this one. Really, is that, I suspect, what happens. Um, I note the very wide range of Scottish Wildlife Trust uh, sites, and, and can I endorse everything that Graham Day has just said uh, about their ability to influence us, their professionalism, the fact that they are actually sought out for their views, I, I think says quite a lot about the organisation and the people who work for it, and it is indeed rare. Uh, talking about rare things, of course, I actually have the Montrose Basin just down the road from where I live and in my uh, constituency, one square mile of mud, which twice a day gets extremely wet. Um, absolutely fabulous and iconic bird sanctuary. And of course, it's not just the birds because it's everything else that lives around it, a point to which I will return. And uh, yes, I've been there. And of course, when I got there, well, you know, the, the, the top brass turn up and the manager's there and... and, and I get to see it the way they want me to see it. But of course, the people who really make the SWT work are the volunteers. And I really want to point that out, that without them, it just wouldn't happen. They're the ones who are there at the hours when nobody else is. They're the ones who make sure that when there are some 12,000 uh, visitors each year to Montrose Basin, that they get a welcome and the information that they need. I noticed that there are 2,500 educational visits each year. That adds up to pretty much every local school is engaged and get there pretty often. And I noticed their program tells me that one of the things they do is called Mud Glorious Mud. And then boringly, it tells me that's for children. I think that's pretty unreasonable, really. But apparently, there's also a walk, I haven't done this one, out to the middle. So you can walk out to the middle of this. It must be a half hour, sorry, half, more than half an hour. Um, walk out half a mile out into the middle of the mud. I guess you'll need Stuart Stevens, aforementioned uh, wellies. Uh, and then you must remember to come back uh, before the water does, because it's a respecter of no man. The highlight, I guess, is late September, early October, when they tell me that some 60,000 pink-footed geese decide to take off looking for themselves for breakfast at about half past six in the morning in the local fields. And if you're there, it's a spectacular sight. I have to say that's one I've not yet managed to do, but I know just how noisy it is from living close by. The uh, Scottish Wildlife Trust also has a very good working relationship with GlaxoSmithKline, GS Clare, as it's known locally. And I think actually that's an important indicator of how you make these things work. If you actually engage with the local community and you engage with the local industry, then there's ways and means of extracting significant sums of money, not only to get the visitor centre built, uh, but possibly to be refurbished. And that's an important part of what they do. Uh, I note in passing, presiding officer, that not only do we have all these pink-feeted geese uh, and many others, but actually we have ospreys in the area, uh, which are rarer in Scotland even than golden eagles. Uh, and that's uh, maybe uh, something which we will, we will develop. But I'd like to, to close by going back to the issue which uh, Claudia Beamish first mentioned and Rob Gibson has also mentioned, and that's biodiversity, because I think there's a hugely important point in here that I'd like to reiterate. We can try to measure biodiversity. Uh, and the report which comes from Scottish Wildlife Trust makes this point. It's easier to measure the bigger ones, rather more difficult to measure the smaller ones, extremely difficult to count the bugs and the beetles. But I would suggest to you it's impossible to count the even smaller beasties. The wee ones are a struggle and the micro ones are impossible. And therefore, one of the things that I would suggest we need to do when we're thinking about biodiversity, whilst we will try to measure what we can measure, and I'm sure we should, is that actually we should simply look after the landscapes. If we look after the habitats, then we will, without knowing how to measure it, be looking after the species which the habitat supports. And I would therefore like to suggest to us that we should really think about look after the habitat, look after the environment, and maybe the bugs and beetles will actually look after themselves. Thank you.
Thank you very much. I now call Alex Johnston to be followed by Angus MacDonald. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I stand here tonight as a substitute uh, and bring forward the apologies of my colleague Alec Ferguson, who was a signatory to the motion, a supporter of the motion, and had hoped to be here himself tonight to speak to it. Uh, however, he has been called away on other parliamentary business, and as a consequence, he asked me to step in at the last minute. And what a pleasure it is to step in at the last minute and express my personal support for this motion and for the Scottish Wildlife Trust and its work over 50 years. As has been mentioned by a number of speakers already, uh, my local connection, uh, nearest reserve that the, the Trust manages, is of course Montrose Basin, uh, and I'm a regular visitor. Uh, it is of course one of the, 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 the examples of an absolutely unique habitat that we have here in Scotland, uh, and one that requires to be protected, and is perfectly well uh, done so by the Wildlife Trust itself. However, uh, as I did some research into the activities of the Wildlife Trust, uh, I was delighted to see that uh, they are, of course, heavily involved in protecting the, uh, the, the site at the Loch of Lowe's, uh, where the ospreys uh, regularly nest. Uh, and perhaps uh, they also need to be commended for the work they're doing with a number of extremely rare species in Scotland, including the Scottish wildcat, and the increasingly rare uh, gray, uh, red squirrel under threat from the greys. However, the, my research also um, caused me to discover uh, that the Scottish Wildlife Trust is no danger to controversy, having taken the lead in criticising Donald Trump for his uh, activities in creating a golf course north of Aberdeen. It was, uh, from my notes, also interesting to see that uh, some have criticised the Wildlife Trust for uh, changing its position on wind farms. Well, perhaps Donald Trump had more to do with that than he realises. It should be said that uh, sometimes your enemy's enemy should be your friend. The work which I also note from the research I've done uh, is that the Wildlife Trust is involved in is the work with the Scottish beaver. Now, it's quite topical because there's been some television coverage this week of the activities of the Scottish beaver. Uh, the public sector reintroduction in Argyll is one which uh, the government has done a great deal uh, to support. The, but the beavers themselves, of course, have branched out uh, in a far more independent way in Tayside, uh, and there are far more interesting things happening there too. However, it is good to see that our wildlife uh, is prepared to make an effort to preserve itself. The work of the Scottish Wildlife Trust is vital. Uh, sometimes the RSPB have been criticised for being a bit too bird-focused, and I think that argument can be made. But the work that the Wildlife Trust, Scottish Wildlife Trust has done over 50 years has demonstrated that they are an effective and a very functional organisation which is protecting some of Scotland's rarest species and they deserve full uh, congratulation for the 50 years of hard work, the effort that has gone in and the continued good work which I'm sure they will carry out in the future. Many thanks. And I now call Angus MacDonald to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, uh, President Officer. Um, at the outset, can I say how pleased I am to, to contribute to this debate this evening uh, and join with other members in highlighting the goodwill that the organisation enjoys. Uh, and can I thank also John Wilson uh, for um, ensuring the 50th anniversary of the Scottish Wildlife Trust is recognised in this chamber uh, for what is undoubtedly an important milestone. Uh, I note that John Wilson's motion makes reference to some fantastic initiatives by the SWT around the country, as have members uh, already in this debate. However, I'm pleased to say that there have been ex some exciting initiatives within my own Falkirk East constituency, all thanks to the SWT. Uh, we have the unique Jupiter Urban Wildlife Centre uh, Reserve in Grangemouth, which John Wilson has already referred to. Uh, we also have the Cairn Dam Local Nature Reserve, which I was pleased to open, along with pupils from Robert High School, a year ago, and we have the exciting development of the Keneal Foreshore uh, Local Nature Reserve in Bowness, which was once home to Keneal Colliery. Now, the first good news story, um, the Jupiter Urban Wildlife Centre, was opened in 1992 by Magnus Magnusson, and it sits cheek by jowl with the agrochemical industry in Grangemouth and continues to attract a great deal of goodwill from the, from the multinational companies operating in the town. 
uh, with the owners of the land, Calachem, uh, previously Chemfine, renting it to the Scottish Wildlife Trust for the nominal rent of £1 per annum. Uh, apart from it being the venue last summer for the launch of, uh, by the Minister of the 2020 Challenge uh, for Scotland's Biodiversity, the centre attracts a large number of local school pupils with four local Grangeworth primaries, Murray, Bowhouse, Bean Cross and Sacred Heart, all within walking distance and all visit regularly. In addition to these, um, both primary and secondary schools from across the Falkirk Council area come for formal education sessions with an estimated 18,000 local school children having visited the Jupiter Centre over the past 22 years. In addition, uh, the local Forth Valley College, both the Falkirk and Alloa campuses, spend a lot of time there with their students over the winter. Uh, and to have wildlife such as kingfishers, barn owls, greater spotted woodpeckers, sparrow hawks, willow warblers, eight species of dragonfly, ten species of butterfly, to uh, toads, frogs, palmate utes, newts, pipistrelle bats, to name just a few, and that's all only metres from a uh, firm's manufacturing agrochemicals. Uh, it's simply amazing. Uh, the centres attracted funding from major firms such as Calachem and Syngenta, also Falkirk Environmental Trust, and has recently secured funding of 36,000 from Viola Environmental Trust for the a wildlife garden redesign uh, and almost £10,000 from Communities and Families Scotland to run a forest school programme for the, for the local schools. So there's great work going on, a uh, tremendous work going on actually, and I'm sure we all wish them decades more of success and continued support from local industry. And can I say I continually remind a uh, local industry of the need for them to continue uh, their support. Another great wee success story uh, we have in Falkirk East uh, constituency, thanks to the Scottish Wildlife Trust, is the Cadden Dam's local nature reserve, which through close working with Robert High School, delivers enhanced learning experiences and skills development for the young people and staff, enhanced transition opportunities, enhanced outdoor learning and sustainable education experiences, enhanced community involvement and enterprise activities, which overwhelmingly fit uh, in with the core ethos of Curriculum for Excellence. Labrador High School has developed a very strong relationship with uh, Cairn Dam's SWT Reserve, uh, with the pupils part of the management group, uh, which was formed last year and consists, consists of SWT, uh, pupils and staff at Labrador High, members of the local community, Falkirk Council, communities along the Cairn Association, and Labrador and Stennis Muir Environmental Response. So there's a real uh, sense of ownership by the community, uh, and another excellent good news story. Yeah, I see that I'm out of time uh, again, unfortunately. Um, so in closing, can I just say that uh, uh, all these three projects that I've referred to are all thanks to major input from the Scottish Wildlife Trust. In fact, without SWT, they simply wouldn't have happened. So on behalf of the people of Falkirk East, can I say many, many thanks to the SWT and I wish them another successful half century. Thank you. Many thanks. And to now call Stuart Stevenson. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer, and let me uh, thank John Wilson, as others have, for the opportunity to have this debate, which is, of course, about thanking the Scottish Wildlife Trust for the work that they've been doing over the last 50 years. I'm sure that the uh, current Minister for the Environment will value, as I do, the sage words that many of the forums that ministers uh, find themselves uh, chairing. I always... Uh, uh, I always found it useful uh, to, to, to listen to what was being said. One of the core things that the Wildlife Trust uh, promotes uh, is ecological diversity. And uh, one of the uh, actions of my predecessor, uh, Mike Russell, in office, our, our first SNP uh, Environment Minister, uh, was to introduce the beavers uh, at Napdale. And I visited these as a minister. And wasn't it impressive? These little chappies had done a huge job. The, the, the dam was twice the height of me. Over an acre of forest had disappeared under the loch thus formed. Um, the evidence of their chewing the trees could be seen all around. But more fundamentally, the biological diversity that came from that, that had been reintroduced, uh, was very substantial indeed. But the effect of that tiny number of beavers was quite large. So therefore, it illustrates the need for care, for monitoring, uh, for, uh, uh, for, for, for long term looking after the effects. Um, just letting new animals go uh, in an unsupervised, unmanaged way 
is grossly irresponsible. And of course, in this country, as in many other countries, we've experienced introductions. Um, they were certainly not down to nature, starting perhaps uh, with the brown hair, which has been here. Um, there's been a long debate as to whether the Normans brought it, but there's been an archaeological dig in Essex that has found that the Romans uh, actually did brought it, and that's thought to have resolved a very long-standing uh, uh, debate. So it's been here a couple of thousand years, and indeed, they brought the rabbits. I wish they hadn't brought those. They chew things in my garden. I'd rather they didn't. But on the other hand, the existence of the rabbit means um, that the buzzards are doing incredibly well. They're having a very good season. A month ago, they were still flying around with twigs in their mouth, building uh, another nest for this year. They're now hunting avidly the rabbits. And I, I hope they, they continue uh, to do that. Some of the, uh, the introductions, of course, that have happened in a variety of ways are hugely damaging, like the American signal crayfish, which we just bluntly don't know how to get rid of. Um, it is possible to get rid of things. We seem to be on the verge of getting rid of the mink in the Western Isles. We know that the Australians managed to eliminate the rabbit uh, in, in 1973, so it can be done. But they've still got the dingo, uh, that was, of course, dogs uh, taken into, uh, into their area. And, of course, the grey squirrel came from North America and continues to threaten uh, the red squirrel. In the northeast of Scotland, Steve Willis uh, of the SWT is the Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels Project Officer. Uh, we're making some progress there. We're isolated from the main body of grey squirrels, and that's good, and that's helpful. Um, I have to say, I worry about some of the squirrels. I was driving up a country road last year, and there's a grey squirrel standing in the middle of the road, and it wouldn't even move. I had to stop and wait for it to get off the road. Uh, ospreys, Nigel Don referred to. Um, the Loch Garten uh, Reservoir in 1971, uh, a, a reserve in 1971, saw so the first ones in Scotland. But they've moved further south, and they're now breeding in Rutland. Uh, so if you make a start, you can do well. Huge contribution to biological and ecological diversity. Significant importance for the climate change agenda. The SWP's tentacles spread wide. Let's hope they continue to do so. Presiding officer. Many thanks. Can I now invite Paul Wheelhouse to respond to the debate. Minister, you have seven minutes. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I'd like to add my own thanks to John Wilson for bringing this debate and thank members uh, present for their contributions. I'd certainly like to join them in congratulating the Scottish Wildlife Trust and I see Maggie Keenan, Alan Bantick and Johnny Hughes are here uh, for, their, the, for the excellent work they do for Scotland's wildlife and for reaching their 50th anniversary. My colleague uh, Richard Lockhead was pleased to attend a reception in the Scottish Parliament recently to mark the 50th anniversary of the Trust and I readily acknowledge the conservation work carried out by the Trust over the last half century, and in particular the contribution made over the years by volunteers mentioned by a number of members, uh, certainly John Wilson himself, Claudia Beamish and Nigel Dawn, amongst others, talked about the important role they play. Um, others have gone over the numbers, um, the membership numbers, the number of reserves, uh, and John Wilson started with that. But I want to pick out some of the reserves that are mentioned. Uh, Lock of Lowe's is one where I had my first, I think one of my first ministerial engagements. So I enjoyed, enjoyed the visit there to see the satellite data for ospreys and also to see the uh, uh, red squirrels there and, and, and birds that were feeding avidly on the, in the kind of picture window that was in the, the, uh, the uh, main visitor centre. Uh, the Montrose Basin uh, was, was mentioned by a number of members, uh, Graham Day and Nigel Dawn and indeed Alex Johnson. Um, so the, uh, that's clearly an important one locally for communities in, in Angus and the northeast of Scotland. And indeed, uh, Claudia Beamish and John Wilson mentioned the Falls of Clyde as being ones that are important to one that's important to them. My own first engagement with the Wildlife Trust was, of course, Wildlife Trust was when I undertook some tree uh, weeding at the wonderful Pease Dean Nature Reserve in the Scottish Borders as part of a group of Coburn's Path and Cove community councillors. And it was hard work, but hugely satisfying too. And I certainly commend that activity to others. Uh, John Wilson mentioned uh, Jupiter Centre and, and then uh, indeed uh, Angus MacDonald, um, who's a constituency member, then talked about the inspirational location that it is for local school children to visit. And I think I was, I was really struck by that when I visited. I thought it was a hugely inspirational site and very fitting location, as, as Angus MacDonald said, for launching the revised biodiversity strategy. Uh, Rob Gibson talked of reserves in, in the Scourie area uh, before talking about landscape scale projects, and I'll come back to the latter. 
Uh, but Angus Macdonald also mentioned the Karen Dams and Keneal uh, Foreshore. And I think these are all great examples of the kind of local work that the Scottish Wildlife Trust are doing across the length and breadth of Scotland. The Trust has also been at the forefront in helping to conserve Scotland's red squirrels, and a number of members mentioned that important work. And I'd like to take this opportunity to record my own thanks uh, for what has been done to date by the Trust and their partners, who are now involved in, on the front line with red squirrel conservation. And a special mention should again go uh, to the very many volunteers who undertake that work. And last year, I was fortunate, as Graham Day said, to uh, visit Kinnear Castle and Angus at uh, Graham uh, Day's invitation. And uh, I went along with Nigel Don as well to see the excellent red squirrel conservation work which is being carried out by the Kinnear Estate and uh, the Scottish Wildlife Trust as part of Saving Scotland's Red Squirrel Project. It was very clear from the informative discussion on the visit the public-private voluntary partnership approach is the best way and the only way really to tackle the landscape-wide conservation effort that is required uh, to ensure the continued presence of red squirrels in our countryside. Stuart Stevenson, like Graham Day, referred to uh, this project and I was very heartened to hear the positive view being taken by those who work on the front line uh, that while the battle to contain squirrel pox virus goes on in the south, uh, where greys are dominant, we seem to have a realistic prospect of safeguarding red squirrels and pushing back the non-native greys from parts of Scotland north of the central belt. I al I'm also keen uh, to mention the Scottish Beaver trial in Natdale, which was mentioned uh, by Alex Johnson and others. The Trust is a partner in the trial, along with the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland and the Forestry Commission uh, for Scotland. And that has been an impressive project with a pro very professionally run trial, supported by a lot of good work carried out by a large number of volunteers. And I was pleased to visit the trial last year uh, on my way back from Mull uh, and to see uh, the, the uh, fortunate, I was very fortunate to see a young beaver kit swimming in the twilight and it was a magic moment. I was also pleased to mark the achievement of the conclusion of the five-year trial phase at a reception at Parliament earlier this month when I addressed and thanked uh, many of those who had been involved. And I even met the project mascot, Bruce the Beaver, and I'm sure it's possible there's a photographic record of that event. No doubt uh, a caption competition is probably accompanying it. Uh, but rather more seriously, though, the, the Scottish Beaver trial has won awards for its work, including the BBC Countryfile Project of the Year Award, and they deserve our congratulations for that. The pressures on Scotland's landscapes need to be tackled at an appropriate scale, and they need commitment and ambition, as a number of uh, members have observed. The Scottish Wildlife Trust demonstrates all of these things and can be proud of the outstanding Living Landscapes project in Coigach Ascent, uh, which was mentioned by Rob Gibson, uh, and indeed at Cumbernauld. And these projects demonstrate the extent, uh, expert knowledge rather, of the Trust and their commitment to integrated land management. Uh, Coigach Ascent Living Landscape Project is one of Europe's largest ecosystem regeneration projects, as Rob Gibson said, and it's a testament to the Trust's ability to tackle issues on a landscape scale. Uh, and that was a point that was made uh, by Nigel Dawn, the importance of that, looking after the landscape and letting nature take care of itself. And as well as excellent environmental work, these projects also provide local training and employment opportunities and strengthen the local cultural heritage links with the land in Coigach Ascent itself. Equally, the project at Cumbernauld will address a wide range of land use issues and provide many benefits for local people as well as encouraging wildlife. Both projects represent the very best in partnership working and integrated land management, ensuring local people are involved in the important issues in their area and able to drive land use choices. This is vital if we are to address the many challenges of future land management, such as responding to climate change and managing our natural resources now and in the future. But I want to turn in the final moments I have to issue natural capital. Rebuilding Scotland's natural capital is a key priority for both the new Scottish Biodiversity Strategy Natural Capital Group and the Scottish Forum on Natural Capital. And SWT will make an important contribution to the valuation and future monitoring of Scotland's natural capital through their membership of both groups. The uh, Biodiversity Strategy Natural Capital Group was set up last year to take forward the uh, Scottish Biodiversity Strategy 2020 challenge and is looking at a broad range of issues on the valuation and use of the environment. Uh, Johnny Hughes and his colleagues at SWT have championed this area of debate and were a driving force behind last year's World Natural Capital Forum uh, gathering in Edinburgh. SWT have a superb track record of promoting a greater understanding of ecosystem services and their membership of both groups will be a tremendous asset, so I thank them for their contribution. Uh, the Trust is at the forefront of that debate and aside from its role in the World Forum, SWT is one of the five founding partners of the Scottish Forum on Natural Capital. Um, I just want to turn uh, at last to the work in terms of environmental volunteering that a number of mentioned, members have mentioned. 
The conservation work of the Trust, including its volunteers, helps to support Scottish Government in achieving its conservation objectives. And we're very grateful to all those who demonstrate dedication to protecting our environment. And Graeme Day spoke of how he trusted uh, SWT's advice. I very much agree with that. And certainly Stuart Stevenson knows from personal experience, and he, and he said so in his speech. And I want to put on my own record the gratitude for their advice to myself and my officials. And I absolutely agree with Stuart uh, Stevenson on just how valuable that role is. SWT has over 800 registered volunteers. They have uh, supported the Scottish Beaver Trial, uh, mentioned by Alex Johnson, and other projects. They are helping uh, in number, numerous practical conservation-based projects, such as the conservation of the Scottish Wildcat, which was also mentioned. And indeed, we should be very grateful, I think, across this chamber, which I'm glad to hear everyone is, of the contribution they make. But I'd like to close by reiterating my very high regard for the work of Scottish Wildlife Trust, to wish them well in their continued work in the future on behalf of Scotland's environment and wildlife. And I hope it's not just 50 years, but many more years thereafter. So thank you very much from all of us in the chamber today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes John Wilson's debate on the Scottish Wildlife Trust celebrates its 50th anniversary. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.